My next Patreon question comes from Joey, who wants to know about the potential timelessness of two animated series from the 60s. I've seen one internet reviewer, not going to name who, who said that Rocky and Bullwinkle and the Flintstones are dated when he reviewed their movie adaptations. I wholeheartedly disagree with him. While there are jokes in both shows that are dated, both shows have a tone and feel that's overall timeless. Do you think Rocky and Bullwinkle and the Flintstones hold up after all these years? That's a very good question. I watched both of these cartoons when I was younger, and upon revisiting them several years later, I did find they held up quite nicely, and a large reason comes down to the clever writing. The main appeal of Rocky and Bullwinkle came from the fast-paced dialogue and the witty remarks made by the characters and the narrator. Chuck Jones used to dismissively refer to animated television shows of this period as illustrated radio, but that's honestly a pretty accurate description of Rocky and Bullwinkle. There was a charm to the back-and-forth dialogue and the way they would break the fourth wall. Jay Ward and his writers were able to find all sorts of humorous scenarios and locations, and Rocky and Bullwinkle's antics were made even funnier by Boris and Natasha continually being on their tails. The other segments, like Fractured Fairy Tales and Peabody's Improbable History, were also very inspired. I think a good test as to whether these classic cartoons are timeless is thinking back to when I viewed them as a child. The whole conflict with Boris and Natasha and Fearless Leader was obviously inspired and meant to parody the Cold War going on at the time. I was not familiar with the Cold War and the whole concept of the Soviet Union when I was 10. I just thought they were funny villains. And the thing with Rocky and Bullwinkle is that the jokes flew so fast that if there was a cultural reference I missed, there was another one right around the corner. I often think of something Dan Povemeyer said about the way they use pop culture references on Phineas and Ferb. Whenever a Disney Channel executive was worried about a certain reference, he would reassure them that a joke children would get would arrive about 10 seconds later. Rocky and Bullwinkle worked in a similar way. The show's cheap animation is often brought up by detractors, and yes, the animation was on the cheap side. But does it harm the series? Not really. The characters were well established, the designs were simple and easily identifiable, and it was not an ugly show to look at. The frame rate was just limited. But again, as a child, I was never bothered that the animation was never Disney quality. What mattered was that the scripts were clever and funny, and I never felt talked down to. The narrator also made up for any shortcomings in the budget, but he was not necessarily used as a crush, and instead allowed for even more gags and puns to be included. With the Flintstones, part of the fun was seeing the modern world given a Stone Age spin. Yes, there's a heavy emphasis on rock puns, but Hannah and Barbera accomplished the task of creating an entire world and four recognizable lead characters. Admittedly, the Flintstones was pretty much an animated version of the Honeymooners, but Fred, Wilma, Barney and Betty still managed to become their own characters, with the voice actors injecting them with plenty of personality. I have to give a shout out to Ed Benedict, who designed the Flintstones and Rubbles and the rest of the Bedrock Citizens. If you show most people around the world a picture of the cast, they could easily identify them, and that's a credit to Benedict and his clever use of shapes and colors. The scripts written for the series were <clears throat> rock solid, and managed to find a number of funny problems for Fred and Barney. This is a show where even the stock sounds are used to humorous effect. Plus, there was the running joke of animals being used for appliances and their general annoyance at this. Again, I go back to my test of whether my lack of exposure to the Honeymooners and the use of 60s references and norms affected my enjoyment as a child. And the answer is again, no. Even the limited animation had a strange appeal to me. I was always fascinated by how Fred kept driving past the same house over and over again. When it comes to Hanna-Barbera's famous families, though, I will confess to having a preference for the Jetsons. Overall, I think both Rocky and Bullwinkle and the Flintstones hold up as really good television cartoons and important parts of animation history. Thank you for your question, Joey.